Hi, I'm Gerilyn Williams, and I would like to present my I used to think, but now I think, reflection over my instructional design and technology class experience. I would first like to reflect over my experience with the lesson planning part of the course. I used to think it wasn't necessary to list productivity tools in a lesson plan. However, now I think including productivity tools in a lesson plan allows me to better prepare all materials to increase efficiency in my classroom. I used to think that Bloom's taxonomy levels of learning did not need to be represented in a lesson plan. However, now I think that it's necessary to include these levels of learning to ensure that all levels of student cognition is addressed in the lesson and that assessments are matched with each objective. Going a little bit more in detail with objectives, I used to think that an objective just needed to state what information the learner was expected to learn. Now I think an effective objective needs to include the expected audience and behavior the learner exhibits under specific conditions as well as the degree to which the behavior is exhibited. This provides me with tangible outcomes to assess how effective was the lesson. I also learned that it's necessary to have a myriad of visible thinking routines to observe ongoing learning. I used to think that there was only a limited number of ways which you can actually observe this type of learning. Things such as asking questions or exit tickets. However, now I think that every lesson should include a myriad of different routines to assess ongoing learning. This will allow me to obtain feedback on when I should revisit concepts before continuing on within the lesson and identify individual and group information gaps. I later learned about incorporating technology and lifetime learning skills, what we call 21st century skills into the lesson plan. I used to think that technology standards and lifetime learning skills are not as equally important as content standards in writing lesson plans. However, I now think that because dig the digital imprint is becoming larger and constantly evolving in society, it is equally important that I equip my students with the technology and lifetime learning skills to be successful and productive adults beyond the classroom and school. Well, also, when my class is moving to an online platform, digital technologies such as virtual labs in lieu of in-person labs can be a solution to many of the new challenges that accompany online learning in science classes. In regard to assessments, I used to think that it's easier to create an actual assessment after the lessons are already taught and there was no need to include it in a lesson plan. Now I think including an actual assessment as well as its rubric and an ideal student work sample in a lesson plan ensures that all objectives are appropriately addressed by the assessment. Lastly, I learned about tailoring my lesson plan to make it student-centered. I used to think that a class heavy on direct instruction will best assist students in learning the more difficult concepts in science. However, now I think serving as a tour guide, i.e. class facilitator, and providing my students with the roadmap, i.e. procedures, and tools to assist them in their journey to grasp key concepts will lead to longer retention than their listening to prolonged direct lectures. I would now like to talk about my reflection of the technology portion of the class. In the technology portion of the classroom, I used to think that there was really no real difference between Microsoft Word productivity tools and Google productivity tools. 
Therefore, I never bothered much to explore them. Now I think using Google productivity tools are not only free, but makes group projects and collaborations a lot easier by allowing real-time collaboration during the editing. Okay. This is particularly important with classes now going to an online platform this semester. In regard to concept maps, I used to think that they were primarily a way to organize key information. However, I now think I can also use concept maps to organize my lesson plans as well as use them as a form of assessment where my students can express their understanding of very complex science concepts in a very simplified way. Prior to this class, I used to think that making and editing videos was time consuming and required extensive training. Now I think editing videos through software such as we video clipping is not as difficult as I once thought. This could be applicable to my science classes this semester because I will now be able to record my own demonstration videos to increase my students' understanding of abstract concepts and procedures that would normally be seen in a science lab. Additionally, technology such as Flipgrid will also aid in my online learning as a way for students to stay connected and engaged through activities such as real-time breakout discussions during our online lessons. I also used to think that creating animations of cartoons were time consuming and required very expensive software. Now I think that there are a host of free animation software where I could be able to create my own cartoons instead of spending up to hours at a time searching for cartoons or animations to incorporate into my lessons. Also, Animations can serve as a creative form of assessment for my students to express their knowledge in a creative way that is often not afforded in science classes. In regards to assistive technology, I used to think that assistive technology modifications should only be incorporated into the lesson if I had students in the class with disabilities. Now I think assistive technology can enhance the learning experience of not just the disabled. So from this point forward, I will incorporate as many assistive technologies into my lessons as possible to enhance the learning of all of my students. In the last part of the course, we learned about the benefits of visual storytelling. I used to think that visual storytelling couldn't be applied to many science lessons. Now I think that visual storytelling is a creative way to explain many abstract science concepts that are often hard for students to grasp. This can be an effective tool to keep my non-science majors, as well as those who just may not like science, engaged in a lesson by relating the topic to other interests that they do enjoy. Overall, this has probably been one of the most challenging courses that I've ever taken because I've been forced to step outside of my comfort zone. However, I can honestly say that every single lesson in this course can definitely be applied to my classroom and it would definitely make me a more effective teacher in the years to come. Thank you.